Taurus, you already know what time it is. This is your January love reading for the year 2022. Feel free to check out the November and December love and money readings for 2021. They're already posted on the YouTube. You might have to sort a little bit uh, the back catalog. Um, for the part ones, which are free on YouTube, I advise you to watch all of the readings as all of the signs represent a different angle uh, in the astrolo excuse me in the astrological charts uh, that we could view love from houses one through twelve. Each of the signs ruling a house, uh, Aries rules one and Pisces ruled house twelve. Um, and so, if you look up. The astrological houses, uh, say you throw it in a Google search engine, you can see what each house represents. And by it's by that angle by which you could look at love or money, for instance. So um, what else can I say? So yeah, the part ones of love and money for all the signs are free on YouTube. The part twos and the part two to this reading is going to be exclusively posted on the Patreon. Now the Patreon is only $3 a month if you wish to subscribe, link below. I always like to say that you're voting with your dollar. You're voting for the vibe of the tribe. You're, excuse me, the vibe of the tribe. You're raising the vibe of the collective creative community, the tarot spiritual community. And you're allowing me to continue to put out awesome high vibrational content that resonates on the side of love and light. Peace, joy, happiness, and prosperity. That's what we're about on this channel. So, you know, high vibrational content is few and far between nowadays. So um, when you do subscribe to the Patreon, you're literally having such a huge, beautiful, powerful impact. Um, on, you know, the, the, the future of this life that we lead. Um, you know, so for, for anyone uh, that, you know, watches this and hell, for even generations to come, now the lover's card is jumping out here. Um, it really wanted to make its presence known. This is Gemini energy, springtime energy. This is powered by the number six. Before we d uh, dive into this juicy energy and the rest of the cards I want to come out to us, I should say, um, subscribe to the Patreon, watch all the signs. Part two of Love and Money, November and December are already on the Patreon. Part two, by the time you watch this, is going to be posted for January 22 of the love reading for you. Um, uh, as well as for the all signs and Aries. Oh, actually, excuse me, this is for Aries. I, I've been calling this Taurus. Uh, my bad, Aries. Um, so what I should say is um, check out the Instagram, check out the TikTok. Reach out for a one-on-one -on -one reading. It's only $2 a minute. Um, that could be done over phone, video, chat, messenger, whatever you feel most comfortable with, email. Um, and then, as always, feel free to like, share, comment, subscribe here on, on the Patreon or YouTube and on the social media. Share with friends, family, anyone that you might think would like a reading or just enjoy the um, content value um, of these videos. So, without further ado, Aries, my apologies. Um, myself of am, am, excuse me am an Aries um, and so this is very delectable to see that the lover's card is out here this is a high-ranking twin flame soulmate card so for some of you who have been on the journey of a uh, uh, twin flame soulmate um, you may you may be coming out of a cycle of a karmic twin flame they say that that happens before you attract uh, the real twin flame uh, not to continue to kind of gild the lily or lure you down the path but I mean that's what they say they say that if you're coming out of a karmic cycle a twin flame karmic cycle that's so as to tee up your real true real deal um, twin flame real deal holy field so the fact that this lover's card is coming out here for you Aries for January 22 love um, 2022 this is amazing. I think that you've learned a lot. I think that you've gained some wisdom. I think that you've increased your vision, your third eye awareness of people's energy and where they're resonating, uh, whether it be manipulative tactics or healthy spiritual uh, tactics. And I think you're looking for somebody that's aligned on the spiritual path and the spiritual journey, um, such as yourself, uh, Aries, for those that are resonating with this reading so far. my. Apologies uh, for calling you Taurus. You could be in dealings with the Taurus, or you could just love attracting Taurus. Um, what else do I want to say? 
Now, the six power in this lover's card is about balance, okay, on either side of the equation. It's all about harmony. It's all about equal give and take, giving and receiving. Um, the six is about perfection, okay? So, and, you know, granted, no one's perfect, but this is almost, you know, the perfect love. And I think that the perfect love exists when both parties have this kind of pure intention. And I think that Aries is a very kind of kind, although battle-tested and very almost intimidating, uh, intimidatingly powerful sign. I think that you're going to meet your match in the love department. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if it happens in January 22 and or even when you view this reading. Um, Aries are big lovers, big hearts, uh, very passionate, fiery, ruled by Mars. Their uh, equal and opposite uh, sign is, is that of you know Venus, um, or ruling planet, I should say, is Venus. Um, but in the love department, it technically is Taurus. Now, some will say on the astrological chart that Aries' opposite sign, I think, is Scorpio. Um, don't quote me on that. It might be Libra as well. But um, I think as far as your next door neighbor, in regards to the tarot and the tarot match, the emperor is representative of the um, sign of Aries. It could be, you know, uh, male, female, non-gender specific, but their equal opposite counterpart is the empress. And the empress is ruled by Taurus. Planet Venus is their ruling planet. So you can be pulling in a Libra or a Taurus for that matter. Like I said, I think the Libra is the opposite energy of Aries. Feel free to leave a comment if I'm incorrect, but I know it's either Scorpio or Libra. I think it's Libra. It would almost make more sense because the Empress, uh, you know, represents Libra uh, because the ruling planet of Libra is Venus as well. And, and Venus and Empress are synonymous. Um, so is Taurus and Libra. So let's see what else wants to come out here. What else do I want to say about the lovers card here? Yeah, I think you're just going to meet your match. I think the bloom is on the on the rose petal there. Um, the bloom is on the petal or whatever the expression is for that. I think you're going to find your counterpart. Um, you could jump into ancient uh, Chinese zodiac animal uh signs and signatures, that of the snake, so it could be someone born in the year of 1989, I think it is. Um, we talked about balance, we talked about perfection, perseverance rather. If I said uh, perfection, I meant perseverance. I believe seven in numerology is about perfection, soul, spiritual alignment. Six is more about um, persevering. Um, past that five energy of conflict here. So you having survived everything that you survived, Aries is leading you to this kind of like equal and opposite worthy quality um, uh, partner is what I'm getting. And I think that again, that that is more so informed and uh, kind of bolstered by this kind of energy of been there, done that uh, for yourself here. Um, I'm just pulling up some notes that I wrote for you, Aries. Um, they gonna watch you blow up, <laughs> is what I wrote down. Um, this is in reference to, in particular, your ex, okay? No shade in the T. Sorry, I moved the camera there. But that's, that's basically what we're getting at. That's the value of that sentence. Uh, this was in reference to someone in the past that, like, you know, either counted you out or tried to play you or tried to you know, play victim or manipulate. I'm getting that they are going to be kind of well within the um, parameters in the vicinity of social media so as to be able to see your success in your rising to the phoenix and all of that good stuff, Aries. I really do feel that. That's what I wrote down uh, as a note when I was shuffling and thinking about your reading. Um, another thing that I wrote down was you are leaving the value, you're learning, excuse me, the value of your peace and your time, um, which I think is kind of, you know, mega. It's it's huge. It's enormous. It's ginormous because you're realizing that maybe that ex, maybe some partners that you've turned an eye to, maybe they weren't worth your peace. You know, maybe it was more so worth you kind of being on your own and, and being in your own fortress of solitude and your own haven of peace. 
um, where you feel like you could kind of spread your wings and utilize your time in a manner that's more kind of uh, synced up with your own kind of biological rhythm, so to speak, okay? So I'm getting a much more harmonious energy. Sixes uh, are about harmony as well, like we said, balance with the lover's card. So I think that that's what you're kind of drawing in and attracting more so, Aries. Um, you realize that some people aren't worth your peace and you're realizing the value of your own self-worth of your time. And you know, when you have that down pat, um, you begin to pick quality people in love and relationships and friends and family. Yes, we're born to family, but we can pick who our friends are and who we choose to move uh, forth uh, with, you know, out of family, uh, who we want to communicate with and associate with. Um, but this kind of love, this catch-all love pertains to, you know, your work, your employment, you know, what you love to do. Do you love the people around you in this kind of friendly platonic peer-to-peer uh, -peer way. It doesn't have to be a romantic way, obviously, but I think you're starting to really kind of see the value and the worth of, you know, your presence, okay? We're coming out of um, the holiday season, depending on when you're watching this. At the time of this recording, it's about the 11th or the 12th, Saturday to Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, it's in the middle of the night here. It's like 2 a.m. on LA West Coast time here. Um, so, you know, your, your, your presence is, you know, an actual gift and a joy, and it should be a gift and a joy to, to those that you kind of give your time to. And it could be that maybe you're reconnecting with older friends that you just kind of, you, you couldn't find a match for them or a place for them in your life. But now that, you know, a lot of people's ugliness or true intentions or where their true priorities um, lie and rest now that that's being revealed with a lot of this kind of like in eastern astrology the sun is in the eighth house of scorpio which is you know kind of revealing the truth and people have been wearing more masks than in quarantine and in covid than uh you know uh those on the spiritual path care to admit again no shade no tea but Unfortunately, uh, you know, that's that's how they've kind of chose uh, to uh, approach their life. But luckily enough, you know, those uh, that have kind of kept a pure heart and pure, pure intention were able to kind of see the truth of people. Um, and, you know, by the grace of God or the spiritual path um, and our own self-care and self-love, we were able to kind of see that, see the truth of people's intentions and where their loyalty is laid here. Um, especially at the last leg of this 2021 uh, year, again, at the time of this recording. Um, so there's, you know, different forms of love. Uh, you're realizing uh, the worth and the value. You want to go where you're celebrated. Obviously, you know, that's cliche for a reason. Um, but the highest form of love, is, all of this kind of self-worth and self-value is a form of self-love because you're evaluating yourself. You're giving yourself a high praise, a high value, a high worth of your time and what's worthy of your time and your effort and you're no longer willing to be taken for granted Aries because you have a big big heart and you're a real ride or die sign okay and I think that since you've kind of upgraded your self-evaluation and self-worth that comes along with realizing that you are worthy of the life that you love let alone the people and the environments and the places and things that you love okay and so you're literally pulling that into your, you know, aura, your frequency, your gravitational pull. And you're realizing that the highest form of kind of all of these external expressions of love is the one true evaluating yourself, giving yourself a high evaluation. And in turn, you're realizing and understanding that that is a form of self-love. And so you're kind of, you know, realizing a, how much you love yourself, but also you're taking pleasure in, you know, the, the, the little beauties and the little creature comforts of love here. You know, I wrote down like a, you know, cup of black coffee or a hot shower or, you know, building off of those little creature comforts and pleasures. It could be your bed after a long day. It could be after a good workout. And, um, you know, you're really kind of snowballing effect and getting some positive momentum behind just the overall love and, and the little pleasures of life. And, and I just feel like that's just like, you can't put a price on that. But if anything, you can 
include that and the reason of why you are worthy of living the life that you love and um, surrounding yourself with people that celebrate you and really kind of put you on the pedestal that you deserve to be on. And it could be friends that just have this kind of sweet spot for you and that always kind of loved you and, you know, put you on a pedestal. And believe me, when you really kind of, you know, turn around and look at those people and give value to them, you realize like, oh my God, man, these are my ride or die people. And it's just a huge love fest area. So I'm just so happy for you and I'm so proud of you. And um, please, you know, I, I, I really hope that you're able to kind of glean something from this message that I'm giving to you today. Um, the tower card is out here. This speaks to your ruling planet Mars. This also speaks of Scorpio season, which we said was in the eighth house of illumination, illuminating the sea, the underbelly. That's what Scorpio is about at the time of this recording, getting to the heart and the truth of the matter here. So that it could be that you're coming out of a tower moment. Tower moments are that which are not built on sturdy ground, that which weren't built on sturdy true intentions, that which, you know, ultimately wasn't uh, worthy of you, Aries, okay? And so you're taking this tower moment and you are purifying the resources and you are re, um, kind of integrating it and you're re-inserting uh, a, a higher quality crude resource that was left here in the rubble of the tower. And you are repurposing is the word that I tried to go for there. Thank you, Spirit, for that. And so, and so you are building anew from the ground up. Despite the kind of lack of justice, the lack of fairness, you may feel that you are in the right objectively and others weren't playing fair or by the rules. Don't worry about getting revenge. All of that is for, ju is for justice, is for the universe, I should say, to be had. Okay, water reaches its level and just remember... You are of a high level Aries, is what I'm getting here. Okay. Um, the devil card, the devil. Shame the devil, Aries. I said that earlier today. Shame the devil. Okay. Now, we all know the devil could be in the form of that which was seeping power from you, zapping energy from you, distractions, chaos, uh, annoyances. Could be in the form of immature people you're you're well beyond that Aries. you see that coming a mile away you see that coming a mile away ironically enough your third eye is open and you can see you can see those energies uh that want to try to you know pull you along and lead you along and you're able to see that because you're resting up you're getting your meditation you're sticking to your spiritual practice and to me, I see full steam ahead, Aries. I really do for January 2022 for you in love. And I wouldn't be surprised if you, goddammit, pulled in a Twin Flame Soulmate with this Lover's card. It was the first thing to come out for you. So um, continue to snowball effect that. You know, start with your simple creature comforts. Look around and look at all the beautiful blessings of the things that you're able to enjoy. And... Um, start to see that that is a part of your own self-evaluation and your self-worth and the quality of your life and your love that you deserve Aries. So it's a real deal. Um, all right, I'm going to leave it there. We're going to hop over to Patreon for the part two link below. You're not going to want to miss it. You know, spirit has been on fire tonight and I am excited to see what comes out. So holler at your boy. And uh, I should note the December and November from the end of 2021, Love and Money readings are available on YouTube, part one. You might have to dig uh, back in the catalog. I think I mentioned that earlier in this recording. Well worth it. And then the part one and part two, or excuse me, the part two Money and Love readings for November and December. Again, the end of the year, you might want to revisit that. It's on the Patreon already. So go check that out. Love you guys, and I'm excited for more. Holler at your boy. Peace.